we have a new number one at the top of the WTA rankings, and it is someone that I don't think a whole lot of people have on the radar to take over the top spot from Ash Barty after Ash Barty retired. Of course, I'm talking about Iga Swiatek, and of course, I'm going to exaggerate a little bit if I were to say Iga Swiatek, the new number one that nobody knows. All right, be honest. If three, four months ago, somebody would have told you Ash Barty's retiring and she's choosing to be dropped off the rankings as of April the 4th, would you have picked Iga Swiatek to take over the top spot from her? And I do have to admit, probably I would have not told you right away, yep, it's her. However, she would have been closer on my radar than other players because I think she has all the characteristics, all the qualities a number one has to have. Now, of course, people are arguing, well, she's only number one because Ash Barty dropped out and doesn't play anymore. And of course, that's true. But that she has taken over the number one spot at this point in her career makes a whole lot of sense. So here are my thoughts on Iga Swiatek, our new WTA number one in the world. So here are a few points that I think sum up Iga Swiatek's abilities to the point. So great athlete, really fast, really agile, great in making you play one more difficult ball. So right from the start of the point with a good return, she establishes control. And then even though she's going to get in trouble here a little bit, she'll not panic, makes Coco Golf play another ball and then has a great view of the court and just plays it very smartly. And look at the position here. That's being under pressure and then seeing the court and just playing the ball with the best option. That is Iga Swiatek for you. And we'll see that here again on the next one. Great defense. And then makes it one more ball that Coco Golf can't really do a whole lot with, forces her to do something that she's probably not super comfortable with, and then just takes advantage of that poor volley. And the next two points are a little bit more indicative of what she's been working on, and that is to be more aggressive and right from the get-go so. So notice her court positioning, really aggressive, right at the baseline, first opportunity, and good night. Great serve here, first opportunity, point is over. One of the things that you have to have, obviously, if you want to become number one, is to have consistency in your performance. And Iga Swiatek has that. After her win at the 2020 French Open, a lot of people were very loud and saying like, oh, she's just another one of those who's going to win one Grand Slam and she can't back it up. Annie Gashwiantek proved them wrong. Yeah, there are examples, of course, a lot of them, of players who have won a Grand Slam and then were not able to back it up the next year. Sophomore slump. Sloane Stephen, Sophia Kennan, uh, Bianca Andreescu, Emma Raducanu hasn't done so well right now. Let's see what Barbora Krejcikova is going to do. But none of these outside distractions that are heaped onto your plate after you win a Grand Slam has really deterred Iga Swiatek. She had a stellar 2021 season without winning another huge tournament that brought her to the forefront of the vast majority of tennis fans necessarily. But she won two tournaments and she was the only player on the women's side who made it into the second week of a Grand Slam. And that is the continuity in your performance that you need. There are very rarely first or second round exits at tournaments. So there is that continuity that a number one has to have. And one of the main factors that I think Iga Swiatek credits for her consistency is her work with sports psychologist Daria Abramovich, which that in itself I admire a lot because when I played, had I said I'm working with a sports psychologist, people would have called me and did call me 
mentally weak, not cut out to play on the pro tour, not able to withstand the pressures. And of course, not knowing what those pressures are because nobody plays pro tennis and nobody experiences your life. Iga Shmiantek doesn't care about that. Thankfully, she is helping with her openness about that coaching relationship to take the stigma out of seeking professional help when you don't have all the answers. And how would she? She's 20. So she's number one in the world at the age of 20, having worked with a sports psychologist for the majority of her professional career and actually before that. And it is one of the key phrases apparently that they're using is prevailing and adjusting. And if you look at Iga Shmiantik's game style, there is a lot of prevailing a lot of prevailing and that is what makes it so tough to play against her. Now I've watched many of her matches and I actually made a video about her last year pointing out exactly that prevailing when the odds are against you. So I'm linking that down below in the description because that shows the maturity, the introspection a player has when they're able to let go of a certain game plan and change to plan B, or even it looked like plan C that Iga Shmiantek had to resort to last year at one of the tournaments actually that she ended up winning at the end. So that ability to adjust, to first prevail, to give yourself another chance to stay in the match, and then also to adjust is a characteristic that a number one has to have. And Iga Shmiantek has that, not just in one match, but also over the duration of your career. And one of the major things that she has changed, which is always a major thing for a player to do is change a coach who has got you up to world level and start working with another coach because you believe that that person can help you add on to your game change your game for the better, let you grow as a player. And that's exactly what Iga Shmiantek has done. And I admire that because, yeah, I do know how difficult it is to let go of something that made you successful up to a certain level. And it tells you a lot about how smart and perceptive Iga Shmiantek is that she has made a huge change in her approach of her game style after only one, two, three years at the top of the game. She has grown up on clay and she talked about that a lot that she's always thought about herself as a clay court player. And a clay court player is somebody who, yes, makes a lot of balls and is happy to reset the point over and over and over if necessary. But Igeshviantik just recently said that is not something that she felt she could used to stay at the top of the game and to eventually break into the absolute top of the game. So she has started to work with Tomasz Wittkarowski, and I'm hoping that I'm not butchering his name too badly, a coach who has really instilled in her that she can and should be more aggressive, meaning jumping on the first opportunity that she has and go for things without fearing that it's not going to work out. Maybe a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months. And that is usually how short-term players can think. Not everybody does. But that is a sign of maturity that Iga Shviantek can see that this will help her grow as a player. And I think that really has already borne fruit because of her results in 2022 adjusting a more aggressive mindset and game style. She's already won two of the biggest category tournaments back to back and is actually doing really, really well in Miami as of the recording of this video. So she won in Doha, backed that up at Indian Wells and potentially could finish the Sunshine Double, meaning Indian Wells and Miami back to back wins in a three week period of time, which is incredibly difficult. So in addition to all those qualities, now let's get a little bit more onto the court, her athleticism and her ability 
to just know exactly what ball to play that will hurt her opponent to the max is a strength because this is where the criticism of a lot of people comes in who should not criticize anybody coming to number one in the world, to be honest. She doesn't have any strength. She doesn't have whatever, the firepower that uh, Serena Williams had in the best of her days or Naomi Osaka's forehand or Ash Barty's serve and Ash Barty's slice. Who cares? Iga Swiatek's strength is that at the absolute highest level of the game, she has absolutely zero weakness. No weakness athletically. About the fastest, most agile, quickest, most enduring player there is. Mentally, no shortcomings. No shortcomings. She will not ever cooperate into a loss by just going away. She'll give you one more ball to play at really high quality. So one more ball to make that forces you as the match continues to become more detailed, to become ever more precise, and at some point just overplay. That in itself is a strength because it takes a certain mindset to be able to do that. And Igesh Miantic has that. Stroke-wise, no weaknesses. Upside in her game, to my mind, huge. If you see her newfound aggression on the court, on her ground strokes, if she could then also come in, take even more balls out of the air to finish the balls even quicker, that's going to be really scary. So to call her boring, totally unfounded. Not boring at all. You see a superb and intelligent athlete playing out there when you watch Iga Swiatek. And just because she's very not flashy outside of the court, why is that boring? Just because we don't read a whole lot outside of her tennis life just shows me that she's just a more quiet, more private, more self-contained person who doesn't need to, I don't know, give us anything that is not our business in the first place. That doesn't make her boring. That makes her, again, to me, a very focused, a very dedicated, and a very determined player. And that's also what you need to be a number one in the world. So yes, I think Iga Swiatek is a very deserving number one. And I'm very excited to see how she continues to grow as a person, as an athlete, and where that takes her. Because, yeah, in my mind, she has all the qualities to be at the top of the game for a long time.